What I've been saying about music lately, after thinking about it for a long time, and I very well may change my opinion, of course, but at the moment, I like to say it is the most sophisticated example of human behavior that we have. That's what I like to say about it. I'm trying to, I, th I guess I think I'm, I hope I'm kind of paying homage to heroes of mine that made me want to play that way. I'm, and specifically on that tune, I'm thinking one guy in particular who's a plunger master that is my favorite, and his name was Quentin Jackson. His nickname was Butter, Butter Jackson. And just the way he played had kind of a, I don't know, plaintive, yearning, you know, almost apologetic. And um, that's kind of rare in, in a jazz improviser, you know, in history. Um, there, are, there aren't a lot of examples of that. So I, I, I was drawn to the, what I perceived as my own emotional response to what he was doing. As if while he was playing, he was kind of saying, well, that, that's all well and good, but here's another way that I, I might humbly suggest, you know, like <laughs> that you could be playing notes in, in like a way that has maybe humility in it. Pretty unsung person, but to me, tremendous connection. You know, became a iconic figure for me. The person would look like me because music is personalized to the person playing it. And that's the ideal. Music can mean anything. If I'm, you know, scratching a record, doing some hip hop based on a James Brown tune, I hopefully become James Brown. I become the music. Hopefully I don't become someone else. So you're trying your best to try to understand and analyze the music and its culture and its meaning and what the composer is trying to say in such a way that you sort of become the composer as filtered through your own individuality. So music is you at any given time, but hopefully it's not so much of you that it overshadows the composer. So there has to be some sort of balance. Joel Nevis is going to conduct Shostakovich. I want to be Shostakovich the best that I can be filtered through Joel Nevis. And that's the eternal goal. Do you ever get there? No, but you strive for it. One, two. There's all sorts of hats I have to wear. Some days I have to be a coach, other days a therapist. Um, other days I have to be mom or dad. At other times I'm a colleague, I'm a partner. Other times I'm an observer. While someone is playing a solo, I don't really do anything other than enjoy. Other times I'm, I'm uh, an orchestral surgeon where I have to pick apart stuff and stitch and make it all work together and heal and to make it become a full, healthy musical organism. 
A lot of music is about moments, just like a lot of life is moments. You don't remember the details, but you remember those heightened moments. It's really focused on the task. With the ephemeral mysticism and Twilight Zone, spiritualism of it, you don't know when those moments are going to come. They, they sort of come and they disappear. Sometimes you have a whole concert and you don't have one moment where you say, hmm. And then there's other concerts where you're so absorbed in it, you're just sort of in a yoga session. Like you're just talking to your grandpa. It's just so laid back and, and beautiful and, and, and you're so in control, but yet not in control of, 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 of the music. But those moments are, are really hard to capture because they're fleeting. And I've been trying to put adjectives to it and I can't, it's just a feeling, right? And, and that feeling was not planned, it just happened. And those, those magical moments aren't controllable, but those, those feeling moments of spiritual transcendence just happen whenever they feel like. It's hard to control those, if, if it's even possible. What is music? Well, music is is uh, a special, I think of it as a special form of communication. There are many artists or composers that said, we have music to express things that words can't. And I, I think that that's really true. Um, you know, when you just have pure music with without lyrics, it, it can touch on um, certain emotions that if you were using words to describe, you'd just be nibbling around the edges and not getting the essence. Probably the best answer would be to say, well, listen to this. There occurs once, twice if I'm lucky, every year when I have like a transcendent experience with music. And what I mean by that is, I guess basketball players or athletes call it being in the zone where, you, you know, just everything is so automatic. And the feeling I get is I'll be playing something and I, it's just like I look at my fingers and I don't know who's operating them. And it's like I'm outside of what I'm doing, but I am what I'm doing. And I know that sounds real zen-like, but there, it breaks down the barrier of me and the music. It's just like I become the music. So music for me, what is music for me? I, I find it's just part of my being, part of my soul. I don't know, it's, uh, I think it's one of the more powerful ways that we can uh, communicate, that we can uh, um, commune with one another this idea of having something in common. If we were to sing together more as a people, 
I think we would have uh, more understanding, more empathy, a lot less ugliness that we find in the, in the world today. I've seen it change, you know, people's lives. I conducted a choir at the, at the Utah State Prison for a year and a half. It was an inmate, state, inmate choir. There were these men that they all had nicknames. And I remember in a rehearsal, a, a man named Schmitty, we were finishing singing a song and he just stopped and said, you know, I, I have to say something here. Eagle, talking to another man, I'm sorry for what I did to you earlier today. I'm sorry for what I said to you. And I just felt like I needed to say that. You know, I mean, that's a pretty rough and tumble place in prison. This is medium security. I mean, this was, we had people, I'm sure, that had had done very violent things. But for, for this man to say this to another inmate, I think partially because they were singing in a choir together. Partially because, be, I think because they had had this experience of making music together. That it, it created a, a space where one of them had to feel like he needed to reconcile a little bit to be able to sing with another fellow. I think that's music and it's it's best. surgeon where I have to pick apart stuff and stitch and make it all work together. And then it's, then it's, then it's, then it's.